Good morning and welcome to Citizens Bulletin. Know your role as an informed Pennsylvania citizen. Good morning, I'm Kim Kennedy welcoming you to the program, which is brought to you by Americans for Prosperity. Our host today is Ashley Klingensmith, State Director for Americans uh, for Prosperity here in Pennsylvania. Ashley, good morning and welcome. Good morning. Thanks again. We are so excited to be here. And uh, I have a great guest with us that joined us last year in 2019. And um, Russ Duerstein, he is on the line, the Deputy Director of Concerned Veterans for America. And we have uh, some updates to provide on a brand new campaign that launched um, with respect to ending endless wars. And so we're looking for Forward, you know, to talking with you about that today. Excellent. I'm uh, glad to be on. Welcome, Russell. We are glad that you are on, and uh, we're looking forward to hearing more from you. Before we jump into our conversation, Ashley, if you could, as always, tell our listeners a little bit about the work of AFP here in Pennsylvania, a little bit about yourself, and then if you could ask Russ also to tell our listeners a little bit about himself as well. Yes, absolutely. So Americans for Prosperity is the premier nonprofit, nonpartisan grassroots organization in the Commonwealth that identifies, educates, and activates Pennsylvanians um, who are in favor of a more free society. And so that takes on many different uh, faces and uh, many different hats when it comes to the type of advocacy we do. And so that is everything from our traditional kind of policy sets in that economic opportunity field. So talking through tax policy, fiscal policy, regulatory reform, health care, um, that really empowers people to, uh, to earn their success. But then we also uh, look at different issues that uh, relate to openness and freedom across um, w- w- with respect to America standing in the world. And so that takes on um, a, a, a issue set that, that includes a lot of um, foreign policy work. And so the organization that we partner with at Americans for Prosperity is Concerned Veterans for America. And they are a part of our community, um, and we have staff on the ground in numerous states. And here in Pennsylvania, uh, one of the newest members of our engagement team who lives right in the heart of Philadelphia um, is Linwood Holland. And he is a veteran himself and has been doing some great work on the campaign that we're going to talk uh, to listeners about today. But I would love for Russ to just introduce himself, talk about his background with Concerned Veterans for America. And then what I thought we could do is talk about some of the kind of big moments uh, for CVA throughout 2019, and then really introduce listeners to our new project and campaign entitled End Endless Wars. And so while folks are tuning in, if you're at home or at your computer, feel free to visit our site, endendlesswars.com. And part of what we'll talk about is is featured right there on that landing page. Um, But first, I'll let Russ just introduce himself, talk high level about uh, some of the successes from 2019. And then I'll talk about the fact that um, we can talk about the fact that Pennsylvania is one of three states where we are really diving in on this project and where we actually have a commercial airing in several different media markets that launched uh, just a, a week or two ago. And so I'll kind of read through the script of that commercial, incredibly powerful. Um, and then hopefully listeners at the end of this call will will act because at the end of the day as a grassroots organization, that is that is our comparative advantage in the in the conversation that takes place uh, under the dome with members uh, in Washington, D.C. And here in Pennsylvania, we're in a particularly um, key area and state and commonwealth to be able to drive this campaign forward because we have um, 
many members that sit on the Foreign Affairs Committee, and we have two members that sit on the Veterans Affairs Committee. And so we have an opportunity here to really move this conversation forward and, and have an impact. So we'll tell you how to do that and how to engage. But Russ, I just wanted you to introduce yourself and talk about 2019 and just thank you for joining. Oh, Ashley, it's my honor to be on your show. Um, uh, thank you so much, uh, folks, for having me. Uh, just a little bit about Concerned Veterans for America. Uh, we are a project of Americans for Prosperity. Our mission is to preserve the freedom and prosperity we and our families fought and sacrificed to defend. Um, there are a lot of veteran service organizations uh, in the country, over 30 of them, um, but we're not a VSO, a veteran service organization. We're a veteran advocacy organization, and we do what our mission statement uh, suggests and says, that we're trying to engage veterans and their family members um, to, to fight for and advance freedom and prosperity now that they're civilians uh, in, a, in a new and powerful way, similar to what they did when they wore the nation's uniform and put their lives on the line to protect freedom and prosperity. So it's a real exciting organization to be a part of. Um, we have a lot of folks who help us who have never been in the military, don't have family in the military but are excited to support veterans. They get what we're trying to do and they jump in and they volunteer with us and they help us. So we're a large, vibrant community. Uh, we're in uh, many states across the country. I think currently we're in 13. And then of course we have a presence every state where Americans prosperity exists, which is 35. And so it's a real exciting uh, thing to be a part of. And last year we had from, uh, from 9-11, uh, from the attacks on the towers, of course, that anniversary date, until 11-11, uh, Veterans Day, we had a 60-day campaign called Honor Their Sacrifice. And what we did is we highlighted three important things that, that are going on that are interrelated. One um, is preserving the Mission Act. It's a key piece of legislation that CBA led the way uh, and the fight on that uh, Congress passed. Um, that President Trump signed in 2018. And the key part of that uh, legislation was giving veterans a choice uh, for health care when they could not receive it in a timely manner from the VA. And it has done several things. It's allowed veterans to get in quicker to get help that they need. Um, it has actually improved health care uh, with the VA because as they're strong, as they are competing with uh, folks who have another choice, they're, they're providing more clinics, more, uh, quality care, um, health care for veterans in the VA system is just improving across the board. And then the second part of that is that we really focused on was, um, uh, our foreign policy. We need to rethink that. Uh, as you know, we've been engaged in Afghanistan. We're in our 19th year now. We spend over $24 billion a year in that campaign. Uh, the amount of people being injured or who suffer from PTSD, uh, that increases the cost of, of, you know, the federal government to treat, uh, our, our wounded, uh, service members, be it physical or, or otherwise. And that increases our national debt. The single greatest long-term threat to national security is our national debt. If the country goes bankrupt, the first thing it'll do is cut its defense spending. We can't afford to defend ourselves. That's exactly if you, right. If you need exactly right, and if you need an example, look at the Soviet Union. That's how and why they collapsed. They fiscally fell apart, mm -hmm. and it's no coincidence that the last major war they engaged in was Afghanistan. And that, that's very interesting. So we're working together this year. We've got a new campaign coming up, and I'm excited to visit with you about that. And uh, glad to answer questions as they come up. But that is going to be our focus this uh, this campaign is ending the war in Afghanistan. Russ, that's a great overview. Um, I want folks to know that is the, is the commercial Russ up on the website? Are people able to view that there now? It is on the uh, end, endlesswars.com. Uh, it's there is it's a, right there. Okay, great. It's right there. And okay, on super. Yeah. And cb4a.org, our, our website that we have, uh, it's on that website as well. Okay, super. And what I would like to do is just um, before we start talking about about this campaign and sort of 
some of the polling that inspired it, some of the activity on Capitol Hill that inspired it. Um, I just want to read folks the script of the ad um, because it's very powerful. It features five veterans, Ray Hoskins, a veteran of the U.S. Air Force, Laura Heschel, a veteran of the Army, Ray Charforest, a veteran of the Marine Corps, Sam Rogers, an Air Force veteran, and Adam Miller, a Marine Corps veteran. And um, it's, it's about 30 seconds. And as I said, it's airing in three different states, Pennsylvania being one of the three. And it says, for 18 years, we've been at war. Our brothers and sisters in uniform, sons and husbands, wives and daughters, are fighting a mismanaged war in Afghanistan that our leaders haven't told the truth about. We've lost over 2,000 American troops. We've spent over a million of your tax dollars. Excuse me, a billion of your tax dollars. When will it end? Over 60% of veterans like me think it's time to get out of Afghanistan. Tell Washington it's time to bring our troops home. And then the last image on the commercial is our website, endendlesswars.com. And there, we are asking people to take action. Uh, There is a a bright red button that says take action that redirects folks to our letter to lawmakers that uh, simply says that we expect them uh, to ask that they, uh, that that we're asking them and expect them to uh, vote to bring our troops from Afghanistan home. And it says that as tensions continue to rise in the Middle East, our troops in Afghanistan, Iraq, and Syria are put in dangerous positions that they do not need to be in. Our service members accomplished their original objective in Afghanistan long ago, and maintaining a large presence on the ground does not meet any legitimate national interest. Continuing to deploy troops to Afghanistan puts them in unnecessary danger. Please do all that you can to protect our troops and bring them home. And that letter is being sent both to, I believe, senators and uh, the member of Congress um, whose district you reside in. So please, we are asking folks to visit nendlesswars.com. Simply click the Take Action. You'll be directed to that letter. And uh, we would not be asking uh, if it was not important. And so um, scaling your voice is what we're in the business of doing. So the more individuals that sign, um, the louder kind of the message will be delivered. And so, Russ, just talk with us about um, kind of what the desired outcome is of this campaign um, and also what what really did inspire it at this moment in time. Sure, absolutely. Um, and I'll cut to the end goal, which is to withdraw from Af- Afghanistan by the end of this year. Um, there are several long steps it takes to get to that point. Um, but this conversation today is because Michigan, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, according to our 2016 polling data, was moved in that campaign by the messaging on withdrawing from the Middle East. President Trump campaigned on it. Um, The polls show that your voters in those three states, that that was the greatest factor in their their voting uh, decision than any other of the 47 states. And that veteran and veteran families in your three states are disproportionately affected. So it seems having the conversation in, in those three states, Pennsylvania being one of them, just made a lot of sense. If I, can give, you, if I can give you a quick update, um, we launched this ad on, on January 16th, and we have had uh, over 12,000 unique actions, which has generated over 50,000 letters to leaders in Washington. We've had over 166,000 people view this video already on digital ads with over a million impressions. Now, I want to compare that to the Honor Their Sacrifice campaign that we did for 60 days. We ended up generating uh, 7,200 responses, which, of course, sent three letters uh, per response, both senators and congressmen, for 20,000 letters. 
So in a little over a week, we wow. yes, have done more than double of that. And the, people are on fire about this issue. And the thing that really is getting folks fired up is, um, you know, it's a, it's a left and right issue. Uh, there are folks in both parties that agree that it's time. We have accomplished our military goals within six months of being there. But what we've wandered around since then have done is tried to nation build, which is, mm-hmm. you know, my, my son was in boot camp during 9-11. He's deployed to combat twice. Um, he's still in the service. It is wearing this generation of warriors down to the bone. And when we're trying to recruit new folks to go in the military and they see the way we take care of our veterans poorly through the VA, we see that we're engaged in a 19-year war, um, they see the national debt growing and growing, it's getting harder and harder to encourage the next generation of warriors to come and defend this country. This change in position is about making us stronger. It's not it's not about pacifism. It's not about being isolationist. It is about how do we keep America strong, safe, and free. And deterrence is a much better way to do it than nation building. And this is why it has caught fire on all sides of the political spectrum. And over, uh, well over 60% now of veterans support this move. And more and more as they learn about it every day, that number gets higher and higher and higher. Wow, unbelievable. The numbers are uh, really tell the whole story when it comes to interest. And, um, you know, I know my little brother is a reservist in the Air Force and is going to be piloting C-17s here oh. very <laughs> shortly and uh, the moose themselves. And, you know, I know that, like, a lot of his, his colleagues share – um, share this sentiment that like they are there to absolutely engage when, uh, when there is a, a, um, a real compelling reason and they are ready to be part of that, of that prepared, uh, prepared unit and prepared force. But, um, I think more and more folks are realizing that this is not endless wars are not helping, um, to strengthen us in any, you know, way, shape, or form, and uh, that it's high time to address and think critically about about what we're doing and where we're engaged and where we have a presence. So our team here in Pennsylvania will be visiting over the next about two weeks um, Congressman Dan Muser and Congressman Connor Lamb, who both uh, serve on the Veterans Affairs Committee. And we will be visiting Congressman Scott Perry, uh, Congresswoman Susan Wild, Congressman Brian Fitzpatrick, Congressman Guy Rushenthaler, and Congresswoman Chrissy Houlihan, who all uh, serve on the Foreign Affairs Committee. And so if there is anyone listening that lives in those districts, and I know for certain that there has got to be uh, listeners that live in three of those that we just mentioned, please shoot our general inbox a note, info PA at ASPHQ.org, and just say, hey, I'd be willing to accompany you all to a, a district office visit, and we will get in touch with you figure out a time that is best for you, uh, make that make that visit to the member's office, go grab lunch or coffee, and uh, and that would be incredibly meaningful to our team. So again, shoot that, that general inbox a note, and we'll be sure to include you on those office visits. But we plan to do this in the next, uh, in the next two days. And Russ, how long will this campaign um, uh, kind of persist? We know that the that the campaign in, in quarter four of, uh, of 2019 was 60 days. What is the plan for this campaign? We're looking at about a 30 to 45 day window. We expect Great. to go through the end of February and we want to take as many of the stories that are generated in the field, especially in your three states, uh, Pennsylvania specifically. Um, our headquarters staff will be going to Washington, D.C. at the end of February 
we're going to be telling your stories on your behalf in the office visits we make on the Hill. And that will uh, that will sum up a great 40-day push on this effort, texting, emailing, phone pass-throughs, uh, conversations, um, you name it. This is going to be an all-out grassroots effort to communicate how citizens feel to their elected leaders, and we sure need your help. Incredible. Have you received any feedback thus far from members that are receiving the thousands of, of letters that are being <laughs> uh, uh, filling their inboxes? We have. I just talked to our um, our government affairs person today, uh, Kelly Merkel, and it has been fairly positive. Uh, in spite of the poison that's going on with, um, you know, the national rift that, that's going on, this message seems to resonate um, regardless how people feel about that debate, which is, which is pretty impressive. Um, so much so that um, there is actually talk about Congress reengaging their constitutional um, responsibility on authorized use of military force in a bipartisan way. And that the key that to me is the key for long term health and foreign mm-hmm. policy is when people can set aside partisanship and look at foreign policy as a uh as a unifying uh decision and not using it for political end. And I think that is within our grasp this year with this campaign. Incredible. Well, I can't thank you enough for joining. Ms. Kim, I know that we have just chatted throughout our, our whole allocation of time this morning. But, no, um, it's been a great conversation. Wonderful. Well, we so appreciate the opportunity, and uh, I just encourage folks, listeners, please visit nendlesswars.com. Click the, the the take action button. It is right there on the uh, landing page. Watch the ad. I know I read through the content, but it's incredible, incredibly powerful um, to see. And then additionally, uh, always an effective um, an effective action you can take that is pretty darn easy that takes about. Um, you know, uh, just a couple of clicks is, is visiting our, uh, two social media pages for concerned veterans. Russ, can you just share, um, the Twitter handle is at concerned vets. And Russ, what is the Facebook page? Uh, the Facebook, oh my goodness. My computer just shut off. <laughs> oh, no worries. I will look it up. Yes. If you just, if you type in Concerned Veterans for America, it, it will direct you there. Um, but if folks, I know some folks like to search, um, the page. And so if you want to search the page, all you need to do is type in at Concerned Vets for America. Yes. I was able to just find it at Concerned Vets for America. And there are also numerous posts there that feature the ad. And I just encourage you to share it. Um, you can't share enough. Uh, and retweet if, if Twitter is your preferred um, social media uh, platform. So thank you again for the time and uh, the attention. And we look forward for Pennsylvania to have a big impact um, on this conversation. Russell and Ashley, thank you both for another great conversation. Uh, we're grateful that you would uh, can take time out of your busy schedule to inform our listeners. Listeners, you've been listening to Citizens Bulletin presented by Americans for Prosperity. If you want to find out more of what they do, you can go to the website. And Ashley, remind us once again of that website. Yes, our website, you can simply go to Americans for Prosperity. Prosperity.org. There is a drop down there of our state chapters. Click on Pennsylvania, and that is where you're going to be able to see all of the latest actions that we have in our action center. So the letters that we were just talking about and the petitions 
And there you can also see all of the latest headlines, um, including press releases. And so I just encourage everyone to visit the website. And if you ever want to get on our mailing list, simply shoot our inbox a note, info PA at AFPHQ.org, and we'll be certain to get you added to that distribution list. Once again, listeners, you've been listening to Citizens Bulletin here on WFYL 1180, working for your liberty and things that matter. Make it an excellent day.